in that kind of game. What's up, everybody? Welcome back for another epic game hunt in the neighborhood of Akihabara. Today, it is 100% Sega Dreamcast action, shoot 'em ups, fighting games, and of course, some first party Sega awesomeness. So, I hope you're ready because that is what's coming up next. Alright, time to get started with some Dreamcast awesomeness. Uh, do you all remember when you got your first Dreamcast? I sure do. Christmas 2000, we got some Trigger Heart Excelica. Uh, a lot of people love this game, and then I know some people that really do not like it at all. I fall into the camp of people that like it, uh, don't love it, um, but it is good. Like, not love. It's not in the uh, same vein as something like a Dodon Pachi or whatever, but, you know, it's it's a decent shoot 'em up you can have fun with, and now it's on the Switch. Uh, which, I have the Switch version now, and I'm happy with that. Check this out. It's one of the ASCII pads. Uh, these are pretty cool. Basically, like, playing your Dreamcast with a Saturn controller, uh, which just makes all those fighting games just that much uh, easier to play. Uh, either that or the uh, the the uh, joystick. The joystick is pretty rad to spawn uh, in the demon's hand, I believe. Very fun game by Capcom. Uh, just a big open like arena combat game. Um, between this and like heavy metal, like they were uh, doing some interesting things in the late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, were Capcom? They were trying out uh, some some stuff. Uh, so Spawn, really cool, you know, one of my favorite comic book characters. 6700 on Ill Bleed. If you've never played Ill Bleed. Uh, pretty fun, kind of wacky, uh, a bit goofy survival horror game. You got a few characters, you're in like a, an amusement park of some sort. Uh, but it's like a horror land amusement park. Uh, and it's it's good, It's it's bloody good fun. Uh, it'll bleed even though it has that, um, that again that kind of like late 90s early 2000s cheesiness that comes with some of those games uh, Vampire Chronicle Great way to play Vampire Savior because it's it's essentially Vampire Savior just with lots of different options for how to play I uh, got a whole bunch of King of Fighters here. There are a lot of SNK fighters on the Dreamcast SNK and Capcom I, I tell you if you really love your SNK and Capcom fighters uh, the Dreamcast was the console for you. We've got some Street Fighter 03. We got some Third Strike there for 2,500. Uh, that's okay. 2,300 on this copy. As I record this, I think the exchange rate right now is super generous. 550 on uh, some F1 racing. That's like two dollars. Um, yeah, the exchange rate super nice right now. 2,100 on this uh, Power Smash 2, aka uh, Virtua Tennis. Which, uh, I myself, not a fan of tennis, the sports. I don't think I've ever, like, voluntarily watched it in my life. Uh, but some video game tennis can be fun. I do especially like those Mario tennis games. Uh, that's typically the only way to get me to enjoy a sport. Just put Mario characters in it. Uh, Code Veronica on the Dreamcast. Uh, this, a game that I like a lot, but also, for me, a game that signifies kind of... Uh, a shift for the Resident Evil series where they were crossing over from the PS1 era into uh, next-gen consoles at the time we ultimately ended up with Resident Evil 4 which despite the fact that everybody loved it at the time I didn't like it uh, I did not like Resident Evil 4 and uh, still don't um, so I feel like Code Veronica is kind of like the bridge there like the last gas with those classic Biohazard games I really enjoy. 400 for this copy. What the hell? That's like two dollars. You got two dollars. You got Code Veronica. Uh, we've got some Gekka no Kenshi here, A.K.A. Uh, the Last Blade. And I remember back in the day going to a Funko Land 
Um, having, like, no knowledge of the last blade at all, just seeing it for cheap. Like, I had enough money left over that I could pick up last blade 2 for, like, I think 15 bucks or something. Um, but I'd never heard of last blade. Uh, but when I finally, you know, I picked it up, brought it home and played it, I was like, oh, it's kind of like Samurai Showdown. This game is awesome. Uh, because I did like my King of Fighters and Fatal Fury and Samurai Showdown. It's just last blade. One of those uh, unsung heroes of the, the SNK game library. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, Power Stone 2, 5700. And uh, just talk about like the game of games back in the day with the, uh, the Dreamcast. Like if you had uh, at least a few friends over and a copy of Power Stone 4, you were not going to be bored uh, for a good long while. This game's so fun. It's like the, the fighting game... Party game mashup uh, that would eventually become pretty popular stuff, but yeah, Power Stone, Power Stone 2. Couldn't get enough of that back in the day. That was a regular rental for me, actually. Um, yeah, just put that anywhere, Jim. Uh, 700 on this copy of Machin X. Uh, this game was like a one-time rental for me back in the day because I didn't really. I guess I didn't really get it. It's 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 kind of an odd game, first person, sword slashing hacking and whatever else and uh, I, I don't know I just didn't get it I wasn't um, prepared it, it was one of those games I played on a whim and like it's pretty cool you know it's Atlas so like I like the art direction and I can appreciate it more now it's just kind of like a weird kind of like standout game but at the time when I was like 12 or 13 uh, it wasn't really my cup of tea Langrisser 4 for 1000 yen uh, one of them good old RPGs I've never played a Langrisser game, so down in the comments, if you like you some Langrisser, tell me what it's all about. 5,000 for uh, this, whatever the hell this is. Um, yeah, Dreamcast sure did have a lot of uh, dating sims and visual novel type stuff. Uh, Room Mania, number 203, 900 yen. This is a weird one. Um, I, I've played it, couldn't really get into it, but, I mean, from what I, I gather when I'm playing the game, you're just trying to, um, I don't know, like, you throw little balls around the apartment, and you're just trying to get the characters to move around and, like, interact with things, and, um, I guess kind of, like, progress the story in the way you want it. So, essentially, you're just trying to annoy the shit out of them until they go and Hey, I'll go read this pamphlet, or I'll go pick up the phone, or I'll go talk to this person. Uh, so, very odd game. Not one I enjoyed uh, all that much. So, yeah, Room Mania. Uh, but yeah, in the later days of the Dreamcast, uh, when they weren't really going to be making any more hardware, I think, that's when they were, like, companies just started just dumping all these dating sims and things onto the Dreamcast. Uh, and we got what we got. But we're here, we're in uh, Retro Game Camp. Some NBA 2K for you, uh, which I never really cared for those. If it wasn't NBA Jam, I couldn't be bothered. 4180 for the original Giga Wing, uh, which I like quite a lot. Uh, Giga Wing is awesome. Um, just great, solid uh, bullet hell shooter. It gets pretty tough, and it does have multiple difficulty settings, a bunch of characters to choose from. You got the Reflector Force ability to bail you out of some sticky situations. So overall, just a really great, fun shooter. Uh, published by Capcom, and uh, I prefer it over the second one, for sure. second one's still fun. It just it gets nuts with the, um, the bullet and the Reflector Force and everything else. Guilty Gear X for 1380. This game was like a... Like, holy hell, uh, when first playing it, because uh, me and my friends, I had picked up the original Guilty Gear for $10 out of a bargain bin at a Walmart as a kid, and then me and my friends got super, super into Guilty Gear, so when we finally got to play Guilty Gear X, and we saw those graphics, we were just like, oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, it literally was like a, a, a playable anime, the character designs and the... Just the graphics, the environments, everything was so great. The music was obviously epic. Can't get enough of that Guilty Gear X. Uh, here, what do we have? Climax Landers, and it's factory sealed. It's 1980. Um, so I've never played this game, but hey, I did have uh, in my little archives, I had the commercial for it. So hey, here you go. Here's uh, this game that I've never played. 
and don't know anything about. So if you have played Climax Landers, because it's a very affordable game, even factory sealed, it's like 14 bucks. So they're practically giving those away. So let me know if you've played it. Uh, 1480 on King of Fighters Dream Match 99, which is basically just KOF 98. Uh, we got 2001, we got 2002, 2000. Uh, again, like I said, Dreamcast got a lot of love from SNK back in the day. Shinmu. Uh, the classic, the epic that is Shinmu. I was so big on Shinmu back in the day. I, I got my Dreamcast for Christmas, and then I did not get Shinmu with it. So like a few days later, I traded in so many games at the Funko Land to get myself a copy of Shinmu. And then I think I also got like an action figure. And I got one other game. I don't even remember what it was at this point. Um, I thought it was Jet Set Radio, but it wasn't. Uh, Tokyo Bus Guide with no manual. For all that hot bus driving action. You know you want it. Uh, 480 for Tokon Resident 4. Uh, pretty decent uh, pro wrestling game, if I do say so myself. And Tetris 4D. The fourth D... His D's. Uh, keep it keep, keep it PG-13. Oh, um, uh, yeah, Tetris 4D. I mean, whatevs. Tetris, but, uh, you know, who doesn't like Tetris? And also, it's cheap. Super cheap. Most puzzle games you come across uh, on consoles are going to be very cheap. Anything that says Tetris or Poyo Poyo or Columns or whatever the case may be, uh, they're going to be really cheap. So if you want to get yourself some Tetris 4D... Uh, it's only like a couple of bucks at Retro Game Camp. Uh, get there now. Uh, 1380 on Sonic Adventure, uh, which itself was an experience back in the day. And 2080 for this uh, complete copy of Third Strike, Spine Card and all. And again, with exchange rate, that's like 14 bucks. Something like that. So not so bad. Again, when you factor in that exchange rate, we're doing pretty good over here. The prices are not exactly killing us. Uh, I can't vouch for like eBay and stuff though. Under Defeat. Uh, that one's a little more expensive. That's like a $60, $70 game. But I must say I love this game. It is one of my favorite shoot 'em ups on the Dreamcast. Uh, a lot of fun. Kind of like isometric helicopter shooter. Uh, developed by G-Rev. The same developer as Border Down. And Border Down is also really good. But... Let you in on a little secret. I like Under Defeat more than Border Down. Uh, even though Border Down is the one that's more like sought after of the two games. But that's a really great game. Of course, it's available on other consoles. I think it was re-released on PS4 fairly recently. We got Project Justice. Um, again, one of my all-time favorites. A series I'd love to see make a comeback. Some rival schools. 1518. On complete copy of Guilty Gear X, so you can see we got spine cards, we got everything. Uh, here we have Giga Wing at a range of prices, both with and without the spine card, and in varying condition. So you can bring that up to the counter, and uh, you got your pick of the litter, baby. Thirty-four ninety-eight for Street Fighter Zero Three uh, Psycho Ryu Dojo. Uh, which is really cool, I mean, you know, the Dreamcast version of any 2D fighter is going to be excellent. It's going to be essentially arcade perfect. Um, but yeah, you're going to want the fight stick or the ASCII pad or something like that. Because uh, the Dreamcast controller, not exactly the best in the world uh, for 2D fighters. That ASCII pad does make it a lot better though. But of course, like the Saturn version of Zero Three is like the version, but it's so damn expensive. 2508 on uh, Street Fighter 3 Double double Impact, I believe. So you get uh, the newcomers, the new challengers, whatever it was called, and uh, Second Impact, uh, which are great. I love all the different versions of Street Fighter 3. Uh, the graphics were fantastic at the time. The gameplay is still very fun. Uh, and the soundtracks were a, definitely a big departure from Street Fighter 2, but uh, had a had a feel all their own. You know, I like the soundtracks from Street Fighter 3. Uh, 1628 on Rent-A-Hero. Uh, number one, I believe. Even though it's not the first game in the Rent-A-Hero series. Um, an oddball series of games that stayed in Japan. Where, as the title implies, you play 
a, a hero for hire. You get a superhero suit, and then you go out and you help people with stuff. You beat the shit out of bad guys. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Psychic Force 2012. Speaking of game series that I'd like to see uh, make a comeback, I think a new Psychic Force game could be cool, but uh, who the hell even owns it? Taito, I guess? Did somebody buy Taito? Um, these games were super cool back in the day. They made three of them. Four if you count the uh, X uh, Selection of Destiny, which is a reskin of Psychic Force 2, I believe. Uh, another copy of Shinmu here, super cheap, $7.48. Uh, copies of that game just lying everywhere. And it comes with the Shinmu jukebox disc as well. Uh, so you get the music from the various bars and what have you in the game. And $18.48 on Shinmu 2. Uh, which I played on the Xbox back in the day. One of the reasons I wanted an Xbox to begin with uh, back in what what it was like 2002 ish. I think I got it, like Christmas 2002. 748 on Capcom versus SNK. That's nice. Um, but all those Sega games were being released on Xbox, and so I was like, yeah, I would love to have that. I wanted to play Shinmu 2. I wanted to play Jet Set Radio Future. I wanted to play all these great games. Uh, so yeah, I did eventually get myself an Xbox just to do that. 2618 Marvel vs. Capcom. Ikaruga at varying prices as well, although now this is also available on the Switch. And uh, let you in on a little secret, not really a fan of Ikaruga. It's not a terrible game or anything, it's just uh, at a certain point I just get annoyed with it. Not, uh, I, you know, the gimmicks. I don't really like, um, the cave, not cave, um... Uh, whoever the hell, Treasure, excuse me. Um, not a big fan of Treasure shoot 'em ups they just sound yeah, a little too gimmicky for me. I like a nice straightforward shooter. Uh, I prefer shooters by Cave or Toa Plan. Uh, with Treasure, I prefer just like the platformers and beat 'em ups and things like that. Uh, maybe you agree with me, maybe not. Let me know down in the comments, what do you think of games like Ikaruga and Radiant Silver Gun? Are they, uh, your cup of tea when it comes to shooters, or would you rather have... Uh, something a little more uh, traditional. Uh, 1408 on Puyo Puyo 4. We also had some Last Blade there. Lots of good stuff in here. What else are we looking at? Uh, we got copies of U.S. Shinmu. Uh, 5478. A uh, pretty cool variant of this game. You get a bunch of different language options. It's essentially like when you take the um, plastic case out of the cardboard, it is a North American Dreamcast case. Uh, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, now, our final stop of the day, Trader. Uh, always love coming in here. Trader always has uh, some uh, some pretty good Dreamcast games. Always a, a nice selection of Dreamcast and Saturn games. Uh, we got some El Dorado Gate, which is a series I've still never played. Uh, we got a lot of copies of Capcom vs. SNK. That one is 780 yen. That's very affordable. And then 6980 for this copy of U.S. Shinmu, that's more than what they were charging at Super Potato, but their copy was in better condition. We got Capcom vs. SNK Pro. Uh, so you pay a little extra and you get Dan and Joe. You know, who doesn't like that? Oh, God, we got some Mark of the Wolves. What's going on with that uh, supposed sequel? I'd like to know. Uh, Mark of the Wolves was another one that, uh, back in the day after getting my Dreamcast, I had rented... And uh, because I was like, is this, it's like a Fatal Fury, okay. Uh, so I wanted to try it out, because I had always liked Fatal Fury Special. And wanted to see what they could do with like an updated Fatal Fury game. And I wasn't disappointed, Mark of the Wolves, still really fun. We got a nice color, uh, cover variant here, 2780 on that. So that's nice, some Rock Howard, some Terry Bogard for you. We got some Gundam, we got some whatever the hell. Get Bass, 580 in. That's not a suggestion, it's a command. You will get Bass. Uh, 1580, King of Hiders, Dream Match, 99. Uh, and we also have 99 Evolution, 1180, so like seven bucks. And you got yourself a copy of KOF 99, 2680 on 2000. Uh, okay, for me, it's like my favorites, you know, 98, 2002, KOF 11, uh, 2001, okay, very nice, 2002. Um, I haven't really gotten into the most recent King of Fighters games, though, but well, they look pretty good. We got some JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, 
definitely an oddball in the uh, the annals of Capcom fighting game history, uh, but a fun one nonetheless. And the Dreamcast version and the PS1 version are both excellent. They have uh, these cool additional gameplay modes, story modes, and stuff. I think the PS1 version even has uh, some additional story mode stuff. The Dreamcast version doesn't. Uh, so that is pretty damn cool. Another copy of Psycho Ryu Dojo for 2080. I think the more expensive one is the one for matching service. 2380 on this copy of Third Strike. So everywhere you go, any store, any store you go to in Akihabara, they got a copy of Third Strike. So you can compare and contrast those prices. 2080 for Net Gimmick Tyson. Uh, this is a very uh, unusual game in the in the the um the line of versus games. So this is basically Capcom versus Psycho, uh, but you're playing Mahjong. So you know, there you go. Uh, I don't even know how to play Mahjong, but uh, in case you didn't know, there is a Mahjong game on the Dreamcast uh, where it's Capcom characters versus Psycho characters like Gunbird and and Sengoku Blade and stuff. 380 on Code Veronica. Why don't, they, why don't they just pay you to take it, if that's the case? 1580 on the original Power Stone. Great game, but kind of obsolete after Power Stone 2 came out. 2480 on Marvel vs. Capcom, that's okay, that's under 20 bucks. And 5880 on another copy of Moiro Justice Kakuen, uh, aka Project Justice, uh, a game I love uh, unconditionally, like it was my own child. Um, yeah, Rival Schools, I know that the characters, they do guest spots in other games sometimes, but, uh, uh, it would be really nice to see just a proper, dedicated Rival Schools sequel one of these days. Uh, I think, uh, I'm not gonna hold my breath on that one, though. A ton of Sakura Wars games, including Sakura Wars Columns 2, 2280, which rejoice, ladies and gents, because this now has an English, uh, translation. Uh, so it can be enjoyed by all, because it's not just columns, it's soccer wars, so there's a bit of the, kind of the uh, visual novel dating sim element going on there too. Uh, but still, you know, just a great game, a lot of fun. I love to play columns, and uh, just the nice addition of the, the colorful cast of characters uh, really kicks it up a notch. But that's going to do it, everyone, for all these epic Dreamcast games. Hope you had fun watching, I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.